Hello, good evening, everybody. Or should I say good afternoon, as I'm currently in our Boston office. It's only one o'clock in the afternoon, but I know it's a bit later for you guys there in the UK. Uh, thank you so much for giving up part of your evening to listen to me wax lyrical about high speed routes to Switzerland and beyond. We're really, really pleased that you guys could make this presentation with us today. As many of you will know by now, uh, my name is Sarah Turner. I work in business development here at Railbookers. You can see on your screen there that everybody is going to be entitled to an exclusive attendee discount. If you just stay tuned to the end of the webinar. And as always, I can't wait to announce that one lucky person will be winning £50 off their next rail holiday with us too. Okay, so obviously you know who we are, but why book with Railbookers? Of course, I hope that you guys all know by now that we are the rail experts. So we've got such a great team um, in reservations in London and two offices here in the US, where I am as well, um, who really do know these trains like clockwork. They know the best times, the best schedules, the best routes, and all the best things like that um, for you guys. So we're really hopeful to put our expertise to, to use in booking your rail holiday. And we've also got a great team uh, working behind the scenes here at Railbookers to get insider access for you. So what that means is we have direct partnerships with all of the rail suppliers that we work with, the private trains, sightseeing tour providers, and a huge variety of hotels um, all over the globe. Um, that means that we can get the best rates and the best availability for you. And what we're trying to do is make it completely flexible. We know how important flexibility is. And that means you can tailor make any of our packages. So anything you see on our site, anything in one of these webinars or in a brochure, you can definitely tailor it however you want. It's your holiday, obviously. You can start or end these trips in your hometown, your home station or airport, fly out, take the train back. And always worth remembering that we can put it to hit far ahead of when the public can. So you can book your holiday with us now all the way through 2018, um, but just a deposit now. We really are trying to make it flexible. And with flexibility comes the hassle-free process. So we know it's complicated. There's so many different routes, rail providers, different classes of service, different things available, different languages even. Um, you know, I've been here years and I'm still learning, so it is complicated. But that's what we aim to do, take the hassle out of it. So all you've got to do is tell us what you want, we'll send you your ticket, you turn up and get on your way. And that's why we are so proud to have won many industry awards. We're especially proud of the ones voted for by you guys. So that's why, but we ask, well, who are we, where do we go? Of course, we go all over Europe. I'll be talking a lot about Europe today in the presentation. We also go all over the USA. I'm in Boston now, as I have just been on an amazing trip all the way from LA over to the East Coast, only using the train. So I'll uh, talk a little bit about that later. And um, all my friends and family will know. I'll talk about that pretty much nonstop, if you let me. And Canada as well, some of the most amazing train journeys available there through the Rockies and things like that. We go far beyond these places as well. Let us know wherever you're planning on going. We've got a couple of different types of holiday here at Railbookers. Of course, our scenic rail journeys are hugely popular. So some of the trips I'll be talking about today, the train is an amazing way to see the scenery, whether that's over in Europe, over it's in the US, Canada, wherever it is, we'll independently tailor make whatever holiday, whatever scenic rail journey you're looking to do. If you don't have as much time or you just want a little quick getaway and you don't want to fly, I do not blame you. We do so many city routes by train and I think that a lot of our customers are really surprised and, and uh, excited by how far the train can get you, how quickly. So definitely city routes are huge with us. Luxury and private train journeys. You cannot talk about rare holidays without mentioning things like the Venice Samplon Orient Express or the Rocky Mountaineer. We can certainly organize trips, including any of these trains. If you've got maybe a special occasion coming up, a big birthday, an anniversary, you can think of no better way to do it than one of the world's kind of most luxurious trips. Rail and sail is something that is really, really popular at the moment, and I can see why. If you've got a cruise booked and you want us to organize a trip to take you to wherever it is you need to be or plan a little holiday afterwards by rail, 
that's no problem at all. Or maybe you're looking to do something like the Rocky Mountaineer with a cruise through Alaska. We can book all of that. So just get in touch and let us know what you're thinking. Lakes and mountains, all those coast to coast, USA and Canada again. So a couple of types of the different themes that we see really, really soaring in popularity at the moment. Things that our customers love to do and we love talking about and booking. And here are a couple of our top destinations. So we'll talk about Italy today. Of course, we'll talk about Switzerland today as well. Scandinavia is always really, really popular for us because it's got a great train network that's perfect for both getting between cities. So maybe you want to go to Copenhagen, Gothenburg, Oslo, Stockholm. That's very easy to do, all direct trains, a lot of them. Uh, maybe it's that you want to go to the Norwegian fjords. A lot of that could only be seen by train. So Scandinavia is abundantly popular you know all the time especially in the summer spain and portugal again if you're trying to plan your summer holiday last minute or if you will do what i like to do which is have a little break in the autumn where parts of spain and portugal will still get glorious sunshine that's always a really popular thing to do in usa and canada of course our top destinations you can go pretty much all over the continent uh is the usa 48 46 of the 48 contiguous US states and all over Canada, coast to coast, through the Rockies, the train journeys are just beautiful. And speaking of the Canadian Rockies, you'll see on our top itinerary list here, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic for scenery. Whether you're doing it by the Rocky Mountaineer, you know, that is a five star holiday, absolutely on a lot of people's bucket lists, and I can see why. Or you can do it by the local, the National Via Rail train. Um, and still get a lot of that amazing Rocky Mountain scenery as you travel through big observation domes um, in both types of trains. So definitely the way to see Canada. Similarly, coast to coast across the USA, you can see that train there. That's the train I just got off, everybody. It's the California Zephyr. And it goes from San Francisco uh, to Chicago through the Sierra Nevadas, the desert in Nebraska, the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. It is one of the most beautiful train journeys in the world. The Scandinavian Grand Tour, that's the trip I was talking about before with a lot of the uh, amazing capital cities and big cities connected by direct trains. And a sneak peek of Venice by the Alps and the Glacier and Benina Express. A bit of a spoiler, we'll be talking about those later on today in the presentation. They are some of our most popular. And the Venice Samson Orient Express, synonymous with luxury. If you do have a special occasion coming up or it's just a train that's always been on your bucket list, I completely understand. And we do so much. We work obviously directly with the operator so we can get some great holidays for you guys on the Venice Samson Orient Express. Always worth checking out our special offers on that as well. Do you have any questions? Uh, if you do, please input them into the box on the left-hand side of your screen. I will get around to answering as many as I can throughout the uh, duration of the presentation. Uh, we have a little Q&A session at the end. We get loads and loads of questions, which is great. It's great that you guys are so interested. If I don't get around to answering your question, somebody will be in touch at the end of the presentation, um, maybe tomorrow going forward to have a chat with you about um, about whatever it is that you're looking to do or whatever questions or concerns you have. While we're on it, just take a note of the number at the bottom of your screen there, 0203-780-2382. Um, there's our website and an email address that you can get in touch with us on as well. So however uh, you want to get in touch with us, we love to hear from all of you. Let's get going then with the presentation, Switzerland and Beyond by Rail. We'll start with a classic, Venice via the Alps. And I really do think it is such a shame to fly out to Italy when it is so easy to take the train. You'll see them out there. I'll give you a little bit of a run through it. So you go from London to Paris. That's a Eurostar train. Many of you might have been on that one before, but it's always a quick and easy journey. Uh, in Paris, you just need to do a little uh, hop over stations. So I'll give you a great restaurant recommendation as well um, a bit later on in the presentation. Um, and in Paris, you will board at Paris Lyon uh, TGV Lyria train to Zurich that takes four hours and three minutes, goes through lots of lovely French towns and villages through to Switzerland. It's a really, really nice, it's a comfortable train. Uh, we can certainly upgrade you to first class if that's what you'd like to do, though standard is very, very comfortable. And it will get you into Zurich. If you leave London in the morning, you'll have time in the evening in Zurich for dinner, for a stroll by the lake, etc. 
before the next morning taking the train back all the way through to Venice. And there's a picture now of the TGV Luria train. It pretty much is the gateway to Switzerland if you're travelling from the UK. So as I said, about two hours from London to Paris. And then once you're there in Paris, Gardelion, Switzerland's your oyster, we like to say. So just a couple of the train times that you can do because people are always really surprised at how quick these journeys are. I know I was the first time I heard. Very high speed trains when you think about the distances. Baal in just over three hours, Geneva in three hours ten. You can go through to Lausanne, beautiful, beautiful city, in three hours forty. Um, you can even go directly to Interlaken on the TGV Lyria. Normally we would put people in with one change because uh, the direct train isn't um, in the day, it is later on in the evening, but if you want a late departure from London, that could be perfect for you guys um, to get through to Interlaken, as I said, in less than six hours, five hours, fifty-five. So you're taking the train, you're in Zurich, obviously it is a very, very famous uh, capital of banking and finance, but it's so much more than that as well. I mean, you can see just the gorgeous views there from the banks of the River Limac. Uh, it's got a lovely old town, some great riverside dining available naturally, um, and it's just a, a lovely kind of place to look around, lots of galleries. If you wanted to add an extra day on in Zurich, then absolutely you could get a full day in, a, in Zurich before catching the train on. <clears throat> Once you leave Zurich, there's a couple of different options um, if that was a city that you wanted to see in Switzerland to get through to Italy. Now, I'm not sure if you know, recently they have completed work on a long suffering project of the Gotthard Tunnel um, from Zurich <clears throat> through to Milan. Now, depending on how you look at that, it's a good thing or it's not such a good thing. The good thing is it takes some time off your journey, quite a significant amount of time off the journey from Zurich through to Milan. So if you're in a rush or you want to, you know, go as quickly as possible, that could be a great option for you. If not, um, then a change or two can have you going through the most phenomenal alpine scenery on the way from Zurich through to Milan. It really is gorgeous going through the Gotthard Pass. And certainly if you've got time, that's what we would recommend. Uh, one of the most gorgeous train journeys in the whole world. Through down to Milan, just to hop over a platform there. We'll see you in Venice. The uh, canal side paradise, if you've not been to Venice, then uh, it's definitely one that I personally would add onto my bucket list. Uh, I've been a couple of times now, always by train, I might add, and uh, it is just beautiful. There's nowhere like it. Uh, obviously, a car free city. You can see the Rialto Bridge there and the gondolas, things like that. It's uh, just a perfect place for a holiday because it is a maze, kind of lots of labyrinths and streets. Get lost in them, sort of. Find somewhere that will serve you a glass of Prosecco. Prosecco is obviously uh, made so near Venice that it's fantastic value and uh, it's also really lovely weather as well. So the perfect place to explore, loads to see and do. Uh, talk to our reservation team about little boat trips out to different islands, things like that. Skip the line entrances, anything that you're looking to do in Venice. And there are the inclusions for the holiday there. So we've got Eurostar to Paris, onward rail travel and standard class a night over in Zurich and three in Venice. Then we often, what we will do is fly people back. Now, it doesn't have to be to London. It can be to wherever your local airport is. Um, but if you don't want to fly, if you'd rather take the train, no problem at all. Um, that's um, obviously something that we do a lot. We recommend uh, normally a night in Turin on the way back, just to give you a bit of different scenery and a different uh, option for staying in Switzerland again. But you could do Switzerland again and see a different city, no problem at all. <clears throat> and from uh, Italy, let's go back into Switzerland. We'll stay in Switzerland for a little bit with the classic Glacier and Benina Express. I uh, Colin promised you a, a, a bit of chat on this, on this holiday. In particular, it is one that we absolutely love. We do loads and loads of um, trips on the Glacier and Benina Express in London or we're sending a team out as well in the autumn of the Railbookers team to do this as well if they haven't already done it so you really will know that you're talking to an expert. Um, you'll travel in and out of Switzerland taking the Eurostar to Paris, switching over stations in Paris and taking an onward TGB through to Basel. 
for a change to go to Interlaken. As I said, there is a direct TGV Lyria train to Interlaken, uh, but it just gets in very late at night. So it's very simple to do the switch over, but we could, you know, perfectly happy to be led by you guys on what you'd rather do, if you would rather. We'll chat about the times and everything like that when, uh, when you give us a ring. A couple of nights in Interlaken, then the Glacier Express from Briggs to Kerr, the Benina Express from Kerr to Toronto. Then we're going to turn around and go all the way back um, before continuing uh, home by train as well. There's a great picture of Interlaken there. Um, you might be able to infer from the name. It means between two lakes. And uh, that's exactly what it is. It's a great base in Switzerland. You've got the amazing mountains. You've got kind of lakeside restaurants and things like that. Uh, definitely worth, if you've got the time, uh, spending an extra day in Interlaken. And we can organize a trip up to the Jungfrau Jok for you, um, which is the highest train station in Europe and is very easy to get to from Interlaken. Otherwise, just use any free time that you might have, sort of uh, meandering around. There's lots of alpine meadows surrounding it, forests and mountains, and some great hiking, as I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll <clears throat> be able to imagine if that's something that you're interested in. After your time there, um, you're going to get on the Glacier Express. Um, it's often described as one of the most scenic train journeys in the world. I think this picture really does, uh, does show why that might be, going over that vibe up there with the out in the background, loads of greenery and things like that in the summer. You'll also be able to see, hopefully, from the picture, those big panoramic windows. This is a train um, made for visitors. You know, they know that people want to see the uh, see the amazing scenery. That's why you take it because the route is so stunning. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And it's uh, often called Europe's slowest express train. Um, for the reason that they do go so so you, so you can see all the scenery, 24 miles an hour um, to be exact, so not very quick, but why would you want to race through scenery like that? I think the whole journey takes about seven and a half hours, and there's not a dull minute of it. Honestly, there is not. Um, <clears throat> uh, people often compare which is the most scenic train, the Glacier Express or the Benina Express. That's kind of a, one of the train geeks' favorite debates. We always say to us, just do them both, <laughs> and uh, you'll be able to judge it for yourself, and we always love to know what people are thinking with that. You'll board the Glacier Express in Brig, and you'll disembark in Kerr, a lovely, quintessentially Swiss um, town. It's car-free, it's got beautiful architecture dating right back to the 13th century. And when you're a rail, a rail traveller, like we all are, uh, it is absolutely fantastic way to get through the uh, through the Alps to uh, Italy. It's a great gateway if you didn't want to travel um, travel out on the trains that we were talking about before to go to Milan. If you want to do the ultimate scenic way, the Benina Express will definitely definitely get you there. There it is, there's the Benina Express. Uh, there's a train there going over the Landwasser Viaduct, um, which is an amazing uh, uh, part of the route on this train. It's on all kinds of photos, you might have seen that before. But it really is as phenomenal as it looks. Um, as I said, often debated which is the most scenic. This uh, train runs solely along UNESCO World Heritage listed tracks. As I said, you can use it to get down to Italy, it goes down to Toronto, it goes from a sort of snowy Switzerland all the way down into Italy to Toronto. You can stop there for lunch or a coffee or <coughs> or uh, um, and then return, sorry, or you can change and go down further on into Italy if you wanted to get down to Venice, Florence, Rome, wherever it might be. There are the Glacier and the Nina Express holiday inclusions when you uh, book with rail because if you wanted to um, you know do something like add on rail from your home station to get down to London. That's absolutely something that we could do for you. We'll have two night hotel stays in both breakfast in both Interlaken and Kerr, always with breakfast. Um, if you want to extend any of those you can obviously these are all independent trips. Three day Swiss pass um, so you can explore if you've got a bit of spare time you can explore using that. And we'll always book return seat reservations for you on the scenic trains. Now it's definitely worth saying 
with these scenic trains. Uh, and if you look at that picture there, actually, that's a great one because you can see how the windows curve up into the ceiling. It's just gorgeous. But they do sell out. They're very, very popular. If you want to go um, soon, then please do let us know as soon as you can because uh, it is horrible when um, you know, we have to tell people that the, the trains are full on their dates. Um, you know, if there's not time this year, then maybe you can go next year. <laughs> Uh, so definitely get in touch as soon as you know. They do sell out. There's normally one train a day in winter, up to three in the summer, um, and they're very, very popular. Back down to Italy, Lake Maggiore via the Alps, and it's showing the journey here. So you can go from London to Paris, direct from the TGV Lyria, from Paris to Lausanne. That's a really, really nice journey, very, very scenic. And Lausanne, is an absolutely gorgeous, um, gorgeous city. If you want to upgrade to first class, I should say on these trains as well. By the way, no problem at all, and um, especially on the longer journeys like these TG Valeria journeys um, that are uh, a little bit longer than the Eurostar. If you uh, wanted to upgrade, no problem. Once you're in Lausanne, you take the train to Stresa. That is our um, our lakeside town of choice and lake majority but if you want to stay somewhere else that's no problem you can return to london um from milan if you wanted to fly or definitely take the train back instead if you'd rather and here's a gorgeous picture of Lausanne. you can see lake geneva there it is on the banks of lake geneva very hilly as you can see from that gorgeous picture a lot of 12th century architecture in uh, in Lausanne, especially a gorgeous uh, 12th century Gothic cathedral that um, that's always very, very popular. But there's lots of art galleries, lots of places to eat on the river, things like that. So definitely worth adding another day on if you do have the time. So you've got a full day to explore Lausanne um, rather than just having the evening before you make your way through Italy. And there is a picture of Stresa, one of our favourite hotspots on the, the banks of Lake Maggiore. Uh, one of our favourite holiday haunts of Hemingway, you can still see his old, uh, I'll probably pronounce this wrong, someone will tell me, but Gra Grand Hotel de Il Boromes, um, which is still there. And, um, you know, just lots of gorgeous palazzos and villas, fishing ports. Um, <clears throat> It's a really good hub. You can take boat trips out in the summer to all the different sort of uh, little communities around the lake. So that's definitely something lovely to do while you're there. And of course, the dining is absolutely superb. The northern Italian food. I'll put uh, I put Lake Como and uh, Lake Garda in as well because if um, you did want to sort of stay um, and extend your trip, then that would be no problem at all. Equally, it's equally easy to get to any of the Italian lakes. So whichever is your your preference, Lake Como obviously being the favourite uh, of George Clooney. So if you see him, you can tell him that Railbookers uh, send their regards. Um, and you've got Lake Garda there as well. So wherever it is that you fancy going, with that journey in from Switzerland, it's very, very easy to connect. You've not got too far to go at all. You could certainly travel back by train, otherwise the nearest airport is Milan, so you could fly home from there if you wanted to take the train out and fly back. You can see our Lake Maggiore via the Alps. Uh, inclusions there, four nights hotel stay with breakfast and a return rail, as I said, or a flight, whichever it is that you'd rather. A classic rail because holiday now, uh, Venice, Florence and Rome. This is eternally popular uh, for us. You start in London, take the train to Paris, and then you're going to travel from Paris through to Switzerland, to Basel, change to Lucerne, travel through the stunning Swiss Alps, no Gothard Tunnel from Lucerne through to Milan, and then spend a couple of nights, Venice, Florence, Rome, great high-speed trains between these destinations. We do have a lot of people who fly from London to Venice, take the train to Florence, take the train to Rome and fly home. If you've got the time, you cannot beat that amazing alpine scenery through Switzerland. Um, and the journey from Paris through to Switzerland itself is a very, very nice one by rail. Got Lucerne here, just to give you another idea of the different types of, uh, of city in Switzerland that you can stay in when you are traveling out by rail. 
And we have, of course, as Zurich has always been a really, really popular one. We're seeing more and more now people want to stay in Geneva along the way, Lucerne on the way, La Femme on the way. Lucerne is maybe my one of my favourites, I think. Um, it's obviously very well known for its preserved medieval architecture. It's got a gorgeous, colourful old town. You can see there that covered bridge over Lake Lucerne as well. It's got some sort of drawings and things like that on the inside. Very, very popular. And look at those mountains in the background. <clears throat> I always say it for every single Swiss place, but definitely worth adding on an extra night. So you've at least got a full day to explore Lucerne while you're on your way. And after a gorgeous journey through the Swiss Alps by, uh, by train, which we can certainly upgrade you to first class for if you like. Um, it's very, very popular to sort of upgrade the scenic journey and things like that, just to make it as comfortable and as magical as possible. You will get to Venice. I love that photo of Venice there with the uh, with the gondola. If you wanted to book a gondola ride or anything like that ahead of time, just speak to one of our reservations team, and they'll be able to make all the arrangements for you so that you just uh, have the, the reservation already when you show up and go. Maybe a weight off your mind while you're on holiday because it's definitely something you won't want to miss. From Venice to Florence, you'll take one of the La Frecce trains, one of the La Frecce trains, uh, meaning the Arrows, um, and arrive in Florence in just a couple of hours. An incredibly comfortable journey, a lot of different levels of service as well. So uh, definitely have a chat with us and we'll make sure that you're in exactly where you want to be. Um, there's more than just standard and first on, on the, uh, the Frecce, or the Frecce Bianca trains in Italy, it might be worth noting. Once you get to Florence, um, this is what you'll be treated to, obviously. Uh, Florence is one of my favourite cities. Um, and if you uh, fancy yourself with a bit of an art and culture buff, uh, as I do, then you'll definitely love it too. It's the birthplace of the Renaissance. You can certainly go to the top of the um, cathedral there, with that amazing Duomo, and look over the kind of uh, umber rooftops of the city. It is a beautiful place to go. If you do want to visit the Academia or the Uffizi while you're there, um, maybe a, a to see my, uh, Michelangelo's David or, you know, the artwork stores are absolutely incredible. Let us know and we can book Skip the Line tickets. Um, just so you've got them in advance, the queues are pretty crazy <laughs> sometimes. Um, you know, not to, not to be negative, but they do get very long because uh, obviously it's very popular. So if you've got the Skip the Line tickets ahead of time, um, then you can literally just show up, breathe in front of the queue, and, uh, and get underway. You don't want to spend precious holiday time queuing. From Florence, it's but a few hours onto Rome. Uh, you can see the picture of the Colosseum there. Rome is an absolutely wonderful city. Um, if you've not been, you know, it is fantastic. It's kind of a the hub of, um, of Italy, obviously the capital city, but it's a culinary hub as well. And there's, it just feels like walking through a history textbook. There is so much to see or do. Every corner has got something that seems to date back thousands of years, and that mingles really nicely, I think, with kind of the modern cosmopolitan feel, because it is obviously a working capital city still today. Um, <clears throat> it's very, very easy to get to from Florence. One direct train, a couple of hours, a uh, comfortable journey, and it passes through a lot of nice kind of uh, Italian towns and cities and things like that. So that's the great thing about the trains. There's always something to see out the window, and of course, there certainly would be between Florence and Rome. Inclusions, uh, return Euroclass, Paris, and onward rail travel in standard class. A bit of a longer holiday this one, so you'll travel out through Switzerland. You'll travel back with a night over in um, Turin, normally we would recommend that you could do Milan, um, or you could do somewhere else in Switzerland and travel back that way. It's completely up to you. Um, and you know, no one trip is the same really with us. So wherever it is that you want to go, we'll certainly be happy to help. And perhaps many would say I've saved the best till last with this one. This is our Swiss lakes and mountains trip. It's very comprehensive. It's for people who want to see uh, the maximum amount of Switzerland. And it's so easy to do that. And you know what? Not particularly long at all. A week's holiday, you could do all of this. We've got you with a flight into Geneva uh, to begin your rail journey. But actually, do take the train, because the train from Paris to Geneva, of all the TGV Lyria journeys, and um, certainly that I've taken, that's a couple... But uh, <clears throat> I know that's a general consensus in our office, and we have people who have done pretty much every train trip in the whole world, I reckon. <laughs> um, but that, that is supposed to be the most scenic of those. It's really, really nice, a uh, little journey from Paris through to Geneva, where you can start your journey there. Um, travel to Montreux, 
you can do the Golden Pass line, and it surges the Jungfrau Jock, the highest train station in the whole of Europe, the Glacier Express route from Brieg to Kerr, and the Benina Express excursion to Tirano. Turn around, do it all again. It's so stunning um, that you, you know you'll definitely want to do that. Travel up to Zurich, and you could fly, but equally, we said earlier, about three hours to Paris, quick pop onto the Eurostar, and you're back. Now would be a great time, actually, while I remember to tell you about the, uh, the Trois Bleu restaurant in um, Gare de Lyon. If you've listened to one of my webinars before, I know there are lots of familiar names, so I'm sure that a lot of you have heard this, but um, the Trois Bleu is absolutely amazing. It's in Paris, Gare de Lyon station. It's very easy to get from Gare du Nord to Gare de Lyon, uh, Gare de Nord, where the Eurostar gets in. We can book a transfer for you if you'd like us to, otherwise it's just a couple of stops from the metro. Um, and the Chambler is a fantastic place. Just the, you know, the architecture and sort of the feelings and the decor themselves are worth popping your head around or going in for a drink, but the food is really, really delicious, uh, kind of gourmet cuisine. So it's nice to use it as your first class waiting room while you're waiting for your TGV Lyria through to Geneva or on to Zurich. <clears throat> and there is a great picture of Montreux. You can see the banks of Lake Geneva there, obviously very, very famous for its uh, annual jazz festival in July, but, you know, gorgeous Belle Epoque architecture and obviously the famous Chateau de Chillon as well, um, which you can visit any time of year. The Golden Pass, that is uh, the first of the scenic trains that you'll take in. You can see there the panoramic carriages um, <clears throat> that will give you the most amazing views out kind of to the, to the Alps and things like that in Switzerland. Lots of kind of, you see a lot along the lake and lots of um, beautiful kind of alpine meadows and stuff like that. So it's a really, really wonderful journey to do at any time of year. And it brings you through to Interlaken. I spoke about Interlaken before, it's a fantastic picture there. Um, you know, obviously a lot to see, it, to see or do, but mainly we love to use it because it's the most beautiful place we can think of to do the excursion to the Jungfrau Jok, uh, taking the Jungfrau Barn, which is pictured there. And what we like to do with the Jungfrau Barn is you'll have your Swiss bar, so you'll be able to take any of the trains you like um, on the, you know, to get out there and to get, to get back. If they are open. But um, what we like to do is kind of give you the time so that you can go out one way and back a different way. And there's a couple of different routes so, um, to, you know, to get to the base. So you'll be able to see a lot of nice different scenery along the way. From the top of the Jungfrau Jok, Europe's highest train station, you can see all out over Switzerland. As far as France and Germany on a very clear day. So these views are as wonderful as you'd imagine. In the winter time, it, you know, gorgeous, uh, snowy scenery and you know in the summer you'll be able to see so so far and it'll be all kind of lovely meadows and you'll still get the snowy peaks as well of course. The Glacier Express um, <clears throat> will be the next trip obviously we uh, we had a look at the Glacier Express before and you can see the windows there that will let you look out over all the amazing scenery. It's just an example of kind of how beautiful the trip can be in summer. And you'll also get to take the Benina Express that is on the famous spiral there. As I said before, UNESCO World Heritage listed tracks. And again, you've got those brilliant panoramic windows you can see that will let you look out. You're not going to miss anything. Again, it goes very, very slowly, which is, which is wonderful because you want to be able to see just how amazing this scenery is. And there are the inclusion sets, so six nights hotel accommodation, standard class rail if you want to upgrade. You know by now that's no problem. But your four days Swiss pass, your seat reservations on the scenic trains, and they'll be in whatever class you put the uh, <clears throat> the Swiss pass in will make them. So if you did want to go first, no problem. Your day trip on the Young Frau Barn we're going to include for you as well. So those are my favourite trips that we do going using the high speed routes from uh, France to Switzerland that just open up the whole of the continent for you. We've focused on Italy and Switzerland today because those are kind of our most popular. <clears throat> Perhaps, um, you know, we're just ones that are always going to be the, the classic journeys, but from there there really is no limit to kind of where you can go if you want to go through to Austria or, or whatever you like or, you know, spend more time in there within France and take the train down to, um, to Marseille and things like that. There's no limit to what you can do by rail, really. 
Here's where we go, Europe, the USA, Canada, and much, much more as well. We had a chat about our, uh, our different holiday types. The TV Lyria trains do make it very, very easy to do city breaks by train. Geneva would be an obvious one. As I said, lovely little journey from Paris through to Geneva. So much quicker than you might imagine. Uh, luxury and private train journeys as well. You could certainly, uh, what we do a lot is sort of people who want to go to Venice via the Alps. So they'll travel out through Switzerland and the amazing Swiss Alps of the Gotthard Pass. Spend a few nights in Venice and then take the Venice Sample Orient Express back. Uh, all the other way around, of course, <clears throat> that's always very, very popular. Rail and sail, lakes and mountains, coast to coast, USA and Canada. Uh, definitely if you're planning a big holiday, coast to coast, um, of course, either of those would be absolutely amazing. Here are our top destinations. So we've got the addition of Germany there. Um, Germany, obviously, the, the rail network is famously fantastic, very, very timely, as, a, as I'm sure you might already know, and just so comprehensive, whether it's a tiny village or a you know, huge city, the German railways will be able to get you there and will certainly be able to organise whatever holiday it is that you're planning. <clears throat> Scandinavia, the USA and Canada as well are very popular, and Italy and Switzerland are our two favourites, perhaps, here at Railbookers, certainly on this webinar. If you'll indulge me for a couple more minutes, it would be great to chat with you about things that we do outside of Italy and Switzerland. Um, so this is a great example of how you can use uh, the trains to make a fantastic multi-city adventure, taking in some of the continent's finest capital cities by train. When you start in London, you can travel through to Berlin in a day, and then these are direct trains between Berlin, Prague, Vienna, Budapest. Budapest, I went in the autumn last year, and uh, Vienna in January this year, and even in the winter time, these places are fantastic. Really great city break destinations with so much to do, making them perfect for any time of year. Barcelona and Madrid as well, so starting in London, taking the train through to Paris. Again, you'll have the option to go to the Train Bleu in Paris, Gare de Lyon, as you switch and then take the train down to Barcelona. Now, this is one of my favorite trips, um, or at least this journey, because it is one that is so practical, so far, so comfortable. Uh, Double-decker trains as well, so you can see out the top. Uh, the top windows, um, and it's really, really gorgeous. But also, the scenery is just phenomenal. So you're going to see flamingos, vineyards, chateaus, uh, down in uh, Rome Valley. It is such a gorgeous journey, um, and so quick to then get from Barcelona to Madrid, where you can fly home, or absolutely, you could take the train back to Barcelona, or up and maybe take a, the train up a different way through France. Another holiday that really makes the most of these wonderful, wonderful train journeys, and of course we love the destinations, we love all the cities that we, are, that we offer, but the train journeys are kind of the heart and soul of what our passion uh, is for here at Railbookers, and the trains through the Alberg Pass are certainly no exception. Starting in Zurich, you could fly in absolutely, um, depending where you are in the UK, but it's so quick and easy to just go London, Paris, Paris, Zurich, could be in Zurich in time for tea, and then travel through the Austrian Alps and the Swiss Alps over the spectacular Albo Pass. That picture there is, uh, is of the Austrian Alps on the Albo Pass. Um, and it is just gorgeous. You'll get the green sort of verdant meadows in the, in the summer and always snow-capped mountains. So beautiful. Then from Innsbruck through to Vienna, which is a fantastic city. You can fly back or, of course, you could take the train. <clears throat> Going stateside now, we do uh, absolutely every Amtrak train you can take with us. You can book uh, any of your Amtrak vacations. We love to do that. This is one of my favourites that I've done. You can fly from London to Chicago. Chicago is such a great city. If you've been to New York, I like to describe it as a, a bigger, brighter, cleaner, friendlier <laughs> version of that. I mean, I love New York, but Chicago is amazing. Um, <clears throat> I was there ooh, five days ago, and we did a architecture cruise from down the Chicago River all around the harbor. We've actually voted one of the top 
uh, tour in the whole of the USA um, recently on TripAdvisor, and we have been looking at for years. It's one of our favourite ones, so definitely ask your reservations uh, consultant about that. Though they'll probably suggest it anyway. Uh, from there, travel down the city of New Orleans train all the way to New Orleans, stopping in Memphis um, for as long as you like. We, two nights is a great amount of time. Um, you can take a trip out to Graceland and uh, go to the Sun Studios and all things like that in Memphis. If you wanted to stay longer, we would completely understand that, and that's no effort for us to organise. Down on the city of New Orleans train again, uh, made famous by the Willie Nelson song um, that you may or may not have heard, into New Orleans for three nights. We can organise things like jazz brunches at the Court of Two Sisters, all sorts of things like that, uh, sightseeing tours and everything you need to really, truly experience New Orleans. Um, you know, if you want to take a paddle steamer out or whatever it is, it's a fantastic city, certainly not one to be missed. And from there, you can fly all the way home. Sadly, there is no direct New Orleans to London train. <laughs> um, so we can certainly organize the flight to your home airport, um, or if the package includes London. OK, well, thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. This is my favorite part, perhaps. Uh, we can announce the winner of the, the um, £50 voucher to use on their next rail holiday. And today, I think uh, the winner is Alison, Alison Aldred. So we will get in touch, Alison, and explain all of the details. Um, and looking forward to hearing how you'd like to use your £50 voucher. And absolutely everybody is going to be entitled to £25 per person off their next rail holiday with us. All you need to do, book by the 31st of July, use that webinar code, and you'll be entitled to the discount. And Alison, you can use this in conjunction with your voucher. Um, so lots of great savings there. And how do you book? It's the question, the great question. Please give our travel consultants a call whenever you're ready. The number is 0203-780-2382. We are open uh, from Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. until 8 p.m., Monday to Friday, and 9 a.m. until 5.30 on Saturdays. Alternatively, there's the uh, website, you can get in contact with us there, and an email address you can use as well. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm overwhelmed by the number of questions uh, that we have uh, received today, and lots of nice things. And uh, Nicholas has said, this is a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much for it, which I'm just going to read out, because what a lovely thing to say. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Um, let's see. We've got a question from Diana asking about holidays with single supplements. Um, single supplements do obviously apply to our holidays. Um, we've had people asking before, is it double? It's not double. Um, of course, not all of the rail elements. It will only be um, it will only be one. Um, you only need one rail fare in hotels. They will vary um, as to sort of how much the single supplement is, depending on the different room types they've got available. Definitely speak to your reservations consultant, and they will be able to make suggestions and see where the value for single um, supplement lies and things like that. So we're always happy to look into that. Certainly, all of our holidays are suitable for single travellers. <clears throat> and we've got a question from Fiona who is asking, oh, this is a good question because we get asked it all the time. Uh, when's the best time to travel? Um, I think she's particularly talking about the scenic trains in Switzerland. And it is a really, really good question. So obviously, uh, you know, we're biased. There is no best time to travel. Um, if you go in the winter, you're going to be treated as a sort of very Narnia-esque winter wonderland, uh, vistas, um, certainly, you know, going through the Alps and things like that. It will be so snowy and wonderful, and that's a lot of people's favourite time to travel. Equally, in the summer, it gets warm, you know, the snow melts away, you're going to get alpine meadows and lots of flora and fauna, things like that. Uh, you might still get a bit of snow on the mountain peaks as well, uh, to be honest, so that would be really, really scenic. There are more trains like the Glacier and Millionaire Express. They run more frequently in the summer um, because they are busier, they're more popular, and uh, the destinations themselves likely to be busier and more popular too, but the, you'll get the weather, so it's completely up to you when you'd like to travel. We're happy to be happy to be led by you and happy to give you different prices for different times of year so that you uh, can make your, your mind up and decide when it is you'd like to go. Okay, we've got time for another question, I think. And we have got a question 
from Dan, who is asking about first class upgrades, um, which is a great question. So as I said, we can upgrade um, you whenever the option is available. So if that's for your flight, if that's for your um, trains, as I said, um, hopefully I didn't confuse anyone with saying about like, the different levels of train and on the uh, and the Italian train, whatever standards of service there are, we'll be able to uh, to organise them for you. And uh, on some first class trains, you'll get a meal included. On some, it'll be a drink. On some, it would be more space and extra leg room. Uh, equally, we have access to loads of really great value upgrades. So if our consultants see any of those, they'll definitely be sure to suggest them to you. Okay, and that's about all we've got time for today, unfortunately. But if you uh, if I haven't got around to answering your question, don't worry, somebody will be in touch. We don't like to leave questions left unanswered here at Rail because we're very, very uh, grateful that you would give up a little bit of your reasoning to listen to me, as I say, wax lyrical about railways in Europe. Um, but it is great to have the opportunity to chat to you guys and, and to you know, give you a little bit of an insight into what it is that we're doing and what's popular for us at the moment. Any feedback or questions, always very much appreciated. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all on the next Railbookers webinar. Thank you very much.